Greetings, everyone. My name is Etterville, and welcome back to my Let's Play of Mega Man Maker. During the last part, I covered five viewers submitted levels, so in this part, I'll be covering at least four or five more viewers submitted levels, starting up with this one. DNN-001 Rain Man by Daibumin, with 31 plays and a score of 13. As always, if you want one of her levels to be featured in a future part like this one, please leave both the level name and level ID either in the comment section below or direct message me on Twitter. Also as always, the full disclaimer of this entire LP series is linked in the description below. Also in the description are the timestamps for all the levels that I cover in these parts, so if you want to check if her level is covered, expand the description. And for this stage, Dai Boomin sent me an NSF file replacement, replacing the original Snake Man team with a remix version of it. So take a listen. I think this is one of the remixes done by Rushjet, but I'm not sure. So far, nothing too difficult. Also, nice introduction to all the enemy types, those being the Mamiras, the Metals, Metal Cannons, and Shield Attackers. As well as the Crystal Joes here. I guess I can't slide under the mummy heads. And I guess there's the mini boss room. Pretty easy mini boss actually. And this is where a traditional level would put a checkpoint. And considering that this stage isn't too difficult, I don't mind its placement. The next checkpoint should be near the end of the stage. In the boss quarter, that is. As it stands right now, this is a pretty solid traditional level. Um, I'm waiting for something to spawn in, and apparently it's these footholders. I was waiting for some Yoko blocks to spawn in, but nope, it was just these footholders acting like elevators. This is one of those scenarios where I wish there was an option to set those footholders to work on a local timer, so that we don't need to wait for them to come back down to the bottom.
And that marks the end of Rain Man's stage. Overall, a pretty simple traditional level. Nice escalation of challenges and nice checkpoint placement. Though it's on a forgettable side, and compared with Daibuman's previous traditional levels, this is on the easier side overall. Even this Toadman encounter isn't that difficult. If Toadman didn't take extra damage from the Mega Buster and he jumped around a lot more, this could be a lot of a challenge considering the Toadman's high contact damage. Second level on the lineup is Os Volcos Azuis Hard by Lepatio Tree, with 12 plays and a score of 2. This translates to English as The Blue Volcanoes. But let's just see how difficult this stage will be. And we will be unlocking some ice-based special weapons throughout this stage. And we already have instant dead force beams here acting like lava. Wonderful. As well as all these tackle fires. Well, that wasn't too bad, I only needed to reset the room once. Good checkpoint placement. And here's the mini boss battle, a pretty easy one considering that I have infinite weapon energy here. As infinite life energy. How did I jump over that press over there? Usually I fail that one. So I was lucky there. Whoops. Thankfully there's no iced over floors in this stage. Otherwise that spike sliding challenge could be a bit more of an issue. And I was a bit too fast over there, I should have waited. And of course, I still set it too high. And yet again, I made that jump. I'm still rather surprised how I'm consistently making that jump.
Now let's try this jump again, shall we? And now suddenly we have these quicksand blocks. Yikes, this segment was quite hair-raising, especially when I didn't see Mega Man over there, oh boy. Okay, hold on for a second. One of my control inputs not working. Okay, now it worked. For some reason, my quick slide button wasn't working there, hence why I kept climbing up and down the ladder. I was hoping to bounce on top of that come on, but I got stuck against the wall there. And I was a bit too early there. Remember, hitboxes. That's what I was intending to do over there, but I kept failing. Wow, I held right on the controller there, but suddenly the input dropped. I'd rather just damage boost here, it's a lot safer. There we go, after several failures, I completed that previous section. Just need to do several quick slides in order to make it to the end. And jump in here, and thank you for the checkpoint. Those last three screens were quite a surprise.
This doesn't seem that bad, as long as they don't fall into the red force beam death pit over there. But I do want the perfect freeze. I think it's the boss's weakness after all. This is going to be a bit harder because there's now only one line of quicksand blocks. Ah, uh, I forgot I could just go off screen there. Wonderful. Well, this date is certainly living up to its repetition or description of being a hard one. And most of my deaths are my fault. They're not the game's fault. Or the level designer's fault, anyway. And there are plentiful life and weapon energy drops in case you run out, so that balances out the difficulty and challenge. Again, thank you for the checkpoint. The checkpoint placement of this stage is on point. It's certainly more checkpoint dense in comparison with the previous few stages I've been playing in the past few parts, but it makes sense considering how much instant death there is in this stage. As I said repeatedly throughout this LP series, the more the difficult the stage is, the more checkpoints there should be. Oh, I should have not done a quick reset over there. My bad. I panicked and thought I was gonna die there anyway, so... Just wanna get the pattern down. And it's not as tight as I would expect it to be. And considering the number of life energy drops there are on this stage, it's not a bad idea to use damage boosting to get by these red force beam segments. Well, at least there's a checkpoint before this tower segment. Or is this a volcano segment? I'm not sure. I think this segment would be easier to do if I used something like the perfect freeze, but this works. Wow, that was rather close. Because I waited for a split second there, I almost died. But I suppose this is the escape sequence of the stage, and now we end with a boss fight. Overall, this was a neat, 
Special weapons challenge level focusing on escaping from a volcano. And apparently the perfect freeze pierces right through Skullman's skull barrier. Overall I'd say I give this age about a 6.5 out of 10. Only would recommend this to average to above average Mega Man Maker players in terms of skill. As some segments could get a bit difficult. It's not as difficult as some of the Patty's previous stages, but it can be difficult in a few areas. Plus the challenge progression of the stage was kind of wonky. Some sections of the stage were much more difficult than others. Like one section near the middle, that was the hardest part of the stage. More difficult than what happened near the end. Third level on the lineup is All Aboard the Met Train by Official Meme Guy, with 32 plays and a score of 6. According to the level designer, the majority of the enemies in the stage, or rather all of them, will be Metars, or Metar based. So we have another special weapons oriented stage. So we start off facing these metal cannons as well as the regular metals. And the metal trains, aka the metal K1000s. And if I acquire the fair shot, I can access this area. But I need to wait for this spinning top to respawn. There we go. So let's see where this alternate route leads to. It already granted me access to an E-Tank. Oh, it's kind of like a skip. But there is probably something to the left here, so I will need to return back. That spinning top up there looks rather suspicious. Let me do a quick reset and see where it leads to. Well, I can't reach it, so I'll ignore it. And of course, we have the Picket Men here. I'd say this is another pleasant stage, although out of the three levels I've played so far, this is easily the weakest level. It's not bad per se, it's just rather meh. Probably a 4.5 or 5 out of 10. Checkpoint placement is definitely on point though. I'd probably like this stage more if there were more Metar based enemies present in this engine, but there aren't unfortunately. I need Skull Bear somewhere. Oh! I see. Clever. Please chase me.
Ah, uh, wasn't fast enough over there. I'm trying to damage boost using the Metar train over there in order to access the next special weapon, but it's gonna take a short while to do so. At least that's how I think you're intended to do that. Unfortunately, it travels too fast to the right. I can't catch up with it. So I guess I'm supposed to have access to the Skull Barrier, but I missed it somewhere. Most of the stage is rather easy, so the loss of the Gravity Hold isn't going to be that painful. I just wish we had the regular Metars in this stage. I mean, we have the classic Metals, but we don't have the classic Metars for whatever reason. Another one of those rather suspicious areas. But I can't access it because I don't have access to a certain special weapon. And this stage is stretching on for longer than what I expected it to be. Oh, and because I didn't have access to Gravity Hold, I missed getting the Dive Missile. So it's kind of like a weapon relay in this regard. Oh well, time to fight Charge Man. A bit of a more difficult arena, but it is doable. I'm not sure if that's how you intended to defeat the boss, but I decided to do it that way. It's the easiest and safest way of doing it. But as I said, this is a rather forgettable stage, probably a 4.5 or 5 out of 10. It would have been better if it could incorporate more Metars that are in this engine, or if there were more Metar enemy types present in this engine in the first place. So, fourth and final level of the part is... Dr. Light's Training Complex by Tylerbot, with 46 plays and a score of 9. Now, this stage has two routes to go through, a Mega Man route and a Proto Man route, so I will need to go through this stage twice. I'll first take the Mega Man route.
And based on the title, I suppose this is a training grounds for Mega Man and Proto Man to get up to speed in between each of their adventures. Also good checkpoint placement there. Okay, falling down into those Galaxy Man teleporter pits will send you back to the starting of the room. So it's more forgiving than spikes in that regard. And this one sends you to this middle platform here, so it kind of acts like a checkpoint. So far, so good. There's an optional side route for any tank, which I'll gladly take. And there's our E-Tank. A bit more difficult than the preceding parts of the stage, but it was well worth it. Part of the difficulty to the stage is the fact that we don't have any special weapons to deal with some of the awkward angles of the Puka Pellies. And that was my bad over there. I was hoping to speedrun that segment, but I wasn't fast enough. I should have waited there. At least it's only a few screens away. And there's a checkpoint right after that section, as well as a full life energy respawner, so... Yep, we fight Plant Man now. Well, at least Plant Man does take double damage from the buster. But we also have to contend with his beak on the right, as well as these barriers. You can only shoot him through those glass walls.
Overall, a neat level, solidly constructed, and it felt like a nice tutorial level of sorts. So let's see where the Proto Man route will take us. And already I see some differences. We have the Bacana 24s as well as Chainsaw Gabials. Both of those enemy types we didn't see in the original level. Plus we start out with a free E tank. And Proto Man also takes double damage, wonderful. No wonder why we start with an E tank at the beginning. Thank you for the checkpoint over here. And taking double damage means that the yellow force beams will just two-shot me. Now we're being introduced to the count bombs here. Thankfully, the Chainsaw Gabriels don't deal too much damage. Oh, and I guess this is the end of the stage. It feels that Proto Man's route was shorter than Mega Man's route. Though that may be just me. It was more difficult than Mega Man's route though. But enemies weren't as awkward to hit in some of the locations like where the Puka Pellies were. The only awkward to hit enemies were, of course, the Picados, but that's because of when they decide to open and close. I give the stage a 7 out of 10. Solidly constructed, although I wish Mega Man had access to a charge shot. Then again, part of the challenge was navigating around the awkwardly placed enemy, so I guess the absence of a charge shot makes sense there. And overall, Proto Man's route was definitely harder, but that was more to the fact he took double damage, more than compared to the enemy placements. Still, I enjoyed this level. So overall, out of the four levels I played in this part, my favorite level would definitely be Rain Man by Daibumin. So in the next part, I'll be covering several more Viewers Mid levels. Well then, thanks for watching and have a nice day. Toodles!